Hello, Hello to California. everyone <laughs> in the universe. Yeah. It's great to have you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I mean, we can talk about how the intention of wanting one of your murals, like probably since we met you, always wanted something like this. Aww. So it's really a dream come true in many ways to have a live installation of your art in our new space. Like, Thank you. It's just so beautiful. So we're so grateful and we're so in a space of feeling overwhelmed with how the universe just made this happen so effortlessly, <laughs> you know, because you're here coming to Bali, she doesn't live here, and, you know, on the journey to, you know, share the teachings of the yoga mm -hmm. soon to come, so. Thank well, you. Thank you for inviting me. I always, this whole project has led me in so many interesting places, and I always just come by invitation, and I love that I was able to do it and in, in, in your your home <laughs> of your store in such a beautiful space so, yeah so sure so awesome. this is just the final phases of the mural I did a I use both latex and spray paint for the mural so the background is washes and then stenciling the art and then I go back in and and fill it in it's sort of like a big coloring book at this point yeah, that was the original mission, to paint 10,000. I started, um, oh my gosh, I always lose track of time. I think I started in 2007. Well, a couple of years ago, I actually made it to 10,000. And uh, I had so much momentum. I was just painting murals all over and, and doing so much painting that I just hit that landmark and just <laughs> went right past it. And um, now I'm just over 20,000. So I'll count these up when I'm finished today and we'll add them to the list, but somewhere around 20,000, 21,000. And give it some dimension. I still like to have them come forward and disappear so it has a little rhythm. The little guy's face didn't come out. Okay, I'm gonna sign it. This will be good. Finish. <laughs> 107, 108, 109, 110, 111, 112. Who does on the wall? <laughs> and do you want me to share a little of the project, the origin story, my, my origin story? Yes. So um, I've been meditating now 30 years and practicing yoga over 26 years. And um, I met my husband, MC Yogi Nicholas, in our yoga teacher training in 2000. So we met over 20 years ago, and we met and fell in love and ran off to India together to study yoga. So it's really a yoga love story. And we would go every year to study in South India, and every time we went to study yoga, we would tack on a little extra time to see some of the incredible spiritual pilgrimage places of India. Mm -hmm. So on our second trip to India in 2000, so we went first in 2001, and then we came home and we started our yoga studio. We were very babies and we just started teaching our community, which was so beautiful, in a barn in a small town in Northern California called Quick Bays. Mm -hmm. And um, 
yeah, we just were so, we were so in love with each other and with yoga and we just wanted to share our passion with our community. So I wanted to go see this incredible place called the Ajanta Caves. And I had seen them in a coffee table book and fell in love with the images. In fact, I fell in love with the paintings I'd seen in this book so much that I, I started to paint them even before the trip. But mostly what I'd fallen in love with were these animal paintings that were stories of the past life past lives of the Buddha when he was enlightened animals. And in all these stories, the animals were had superior ethics and morality to the humans in the story. And the animals would teach the humans about courage and compassion and honesty and you know, strength. And the animals in the story were these enlightened beings. And I fell in love with these paintings. And so when we were going back to India to study with our teacher, I asked my husband if we could go please visit these paintings in person. It turns out that it is was not at that time a very popular destination. And so when we went, we went, you know, it was way out in the middle of the country and overnight trains and just this whole crazy journey getting there. And you arrive to the to this place and there are it's in the middle of the jungle and there are caves that were carved into the the cliff and then you walk along the edge and go inside the caves and then inside the caves floor to ceiling paintings of these incredible masterpieces that were about two thousand years old. So the caves were they think started around 400 BC and completed around 280. So it was a project that took 600 plus years to complete. Now I knew very little at the beginning. I just was drawn to them. They spoke to my heart, particularly these beautiful animals. And um, then when we went and saw them in person in one of the caves, you go in with a flashlight. They're not lit because they don't want the light to deteriorate the painting. They still haven't really been able to figure out what is holding the painting to the wall. They've tried to do repairs and 50 years later the repairs will fall off. The original paintings have been there for 2,000 years and they still can't quite figure out the compound of what they use, the minerals and what's holding it to the wall. Um, but they're very, it's now a protected UNESCO site, mm. which is good because they're so fragile. So we're going through the caves and I'm recognizing some of the animal paintings, but then one of the guides shows with his flashlight and there's a wall with a thousand little Buddhas sitting mm -hmm. together, meditating. Mm -hmm. Now the whole trip was extremely sensory and all the caves and all the paintings, so everything's just coming in. I don't think in that moment I that painting stuck out. But when I got home, it was this painting of a thousand little Buddhas that kept coming up in my mind. Mm -hmm. And so much kept like knocking inside, like <laughs> wanting me to do. I, I was like, should I go back to India? Do you want me to come visit again? Like, what is this mm -hmm. image calling me to do? Yeah. And I thought I would just do my own version mm -hmm. because it was hard to get to India, so I thought I would just get a big piece of wood and paint my own version so I could remember mm -hmm. that paint. So I started to paint the Buddhas. Now this is maybe four years after that trip. Oh, so wow. this is how long it takes me to do something. <laughs> I had an idea and like four years later I started. I'm very Inside slow. <laughs> and this one painting took me nine months. Mm -hmm. I just worked on that only. And um, one night when the painting was getting close to finished, I was in my studio late and I was starting to feel sad that it would be completed. Mm -hmm. What was I going to do next mm -hmm. with my life? <laughs> Almost, you ever read a really amazing big novel and you get really immersed in the energy of a book mm -hmm. and then you, you realize you're getting close to the end and you're like, I'm going to be sad when I don't have this world to go to. 
read it again. Like a refuge. Yeah, read it again. Okay. So <laughs> something happened, and I heard. I, I feel like I heard a voice, but not out loud. In some sort of like a feather falling down in my mind, and said, mm -hmm. "Just keep going, and paint ten thousand mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and just felt right. And here we are. So I internally agreed, I accepted this mission, <laughs> and started to paint many, 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 many photos. So wow. I guess the journey began back in 2007, 2011, when it's when I painted that first one. Mm -hmm. And then here we are, a decade plus later. A decade plus later, yeah. Well, that kind of segues into my second question, which I feel like you answered. It was on the lines of what is the true mission of 10,000 Buddhas. Mm -hmm. And it's almost, it's it's kind of you working spirit's mission on, almost like a, a descendant of that era. Well, what I learned after, because I didn't really understand, a lot of this happened for me not as a conscious decision, but mm -hmm. I think very, uncon very deep, I won't say unconscious, but subconscious, mm -hmm. beyond my intellect. And I didn't know why I picked 10,000. It just, that was the number that came to me. And then I, even years into the project, I kept trying to find the answer. Why do I want to pay 10,000? Mm -hmm. And I learned that there are places all over the world where artists have done 10,000 Buddhas. There's caves in China, there are temples in Japan where there's 10,000 figurines of a Buddha. So I'm not the first to come up with this. Mm -hmm. And I feel like they also maybe just had this idea. And I'm just one of many artists who continuing some sort of practice to carry it forward. I did meet a scholar. I was painting a mural um, at a museum in Dallas, Texas. Mm -hmm. And they had a visiting scholar from China. And I said, if I've researched online, I can't find why 10,000 is important. And he told me that um, there's a tradition that when you call in 10,000, you're calling in Buddhas from the 10 cardinal directions. So Buddhas from the north, Buddhas from the south, Buddhas from the east, Buddhas from the west, Buddhas from the north, northeast, from the northeast like this, and there's 10. Mm -hmm. And that there are Buddhas from the past, the present, and the future. So you're calling in from all the dimensions of time and all the dimensions of space, and you're calling all the full of them in when you, was the practice of 10,000, why, why 10,000? That's pretty deep, it's a remembering of the four corners, you know, the four directions, you know, some even say the four elements, but we, then we add, you know, the minerals and we add spirit and make it six elements, right? That's so profound and so deep and so wise to be able to kind of get that download from that scholar and then continue forward with this. Do you know what number you're on? I know that I actually made it to 10,000 a couple of years ago. Oh, really? Wow. And That's then awesome. uh, it was, it had so much momentum, it was painting so much that I, I, I went right past 10,000 mm -hmm. and in the last few years now, I just got to 20,000. So I don't have the exact number at this mm -hmm. moment, but I feel like it was around 20,000 or maybe 21,000. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. So it feels like it's And I, I was sharing with someone earlier, those caves, um, that route that the monks took uh, fell out of popularity and the jungle grew over the caves and the caves were lost for over a thousand years and they were rediscovered by a British hunting group that were out hunting for tigers or something in the jungle of India and they were looking through the foliage of the jungle like Indiana Jones really and it. saw a big carved face through the jungle over one of the caves wow. and they walked over there and imagine discovering 33 caves filled with paintings and sculpture. This is like around 1912, I want to say. The mm -hmm. caves were really discovered. Wow. 1912. Um, wow. And I think that, like you said, some we, there's a wonderful local artist 
where I live in Point Reyes. We have a beautiful community of a lot of retired writers and artists who live in the area. And one day, a woman said to me, she, she slipped it and she said, instead of how am um, How's it going, like painting? She said, how are the paintings doing? Like, how are they affecting you? Mm. And it really made me realize this has not been, they, they've been directing me the whole time. Yeah. You know? And I think maybe in those caves, they really wanted to come out of the caves. They were like, we've been lost before for a thousand years. Can you please take us with you? Yeah. And can you put us in? Miami and a little in Portland and a little in Costa Rica and now a little in Bali. Can you please bring some of this out into the world and mm -hmm. make sure that it's something like that because that's beautiful and that's deep. Yeah. They're cute. They're so cute. They're and so they're, cute. I think they really represent to me this um, the power and the depth when we practice in community. Mm -hmm. There is the image of many Buddhas. First of all, there's no hierarchy. There's no one Buddha and then the little Buddhas. They're all the same size. Yeah. They're all meditating together. So they're all, it's about the collective. And maybe during this time, there's a breaking down of hierarchy and it's more about collective um, harmony and support for each other. That's beautiful. Yes. So uh, someone recently encountered a mural and they said whenever I come to this school I get the feeling that everything is going the right way in my life like I'm on the right path and I thought that was a really beautiful message